We are building a passive solar house, a book by Martina Feierer and Alexandra Frankel. A solar house? What's that? Hi, I'm Lottie, and my name's Frick. We'll show you how it works. A solar house is a house that is wrapped up very warmly so that very little heat gets lost in the winter. The sun shining through the windows is almost all it takes to heat the house. We create the remaining heat ourselves with cooking, bathing, and our electronic devices. Look, he's cooking here. Can you find all the objects in the picture? I'll give you some time to find them all. Here we see the bucket and the snail, the ball, the fresh air ventilation, the teddy bear, the yellow rubber boots, but where's Frick? There he is. He's just laying in bed. Let's look at it. Step by step. The first step is to have the excavator do the groundwork. It digs up the building pit and the trenches for the water and electricity supply. We need an additional trench for a fresh air well. An air well? What does that mean? An air well consists of a 115 feet pipe buried in the ground. Outside air from the house is fed into the house through this pipe. The pipe is located about 6 feet underground, where the temperature is a cool 46 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. The air coming through the pipe is automatically heated up in the winter and cooled down in the summer. The warm air can be used for heating in the winter, and the cool air makes for a pleasant breeze in the summer. After all the groundwork is done, a concrete slab is then placed on top of a layer of gravel and a layer of foil. Come on, the story continues on the next page. It's time to put up the walls. The walls can be made from prefabricated parts by a carpenter or made from brick or stone by a mason. The most important part is that the outer walls are wrapped up warmly, meaning they are well insulated. There is a special computer program for calculating how thick this insulation has to be. Wow, those walls went up quick! There are many different kinds of insulating materials. Let's take a peek behind the flaps to see what they all look like. There are cellulose fibers, wood fiber panel, flax or hemp, straw, sheep's wool, styrofoam, and mineral wool. The sun can come in, but not the wind. The sun is our main source of heat. For this reason, it is necessary to get as much sunshine as possible into our house. In the northern hemisphere, at midday, when the sun is at its maximum power, it appears to the south. The north side of the house, on the other hand, is always in the shade. That's why our house should have many windows on the south side, but only a few facing the north. Windows are important in our solar house. They have to let in the sunshine, but the heat already inside should not be able to leave the house through the windows. That's why we need large windows with triple panes and insulated frames. Because cold air enters our house through little gaps, our house cools down. If this happens, even the best heat insulation is no good. That's why our house has to be built to be wind resistant in order to keep the cold outside. This is done by sealing up the gaps in the outer walls and the corners of windows and doors. During the summer, the sun is high in the sky 
and the roof overhang and the balcony create shade. During the winter, the sun is lower in the sky and the sun can shine further back into our house and warm up our rooms. A ventilation system instead of a heater. We need fresh air to breathe, but now our house is sealed so that the heat can't get out. What can we do? If we open up the windows, cold air will come in and the warm air will escape, cooling down our house. In order to keep the heat in the house, we'll feed in our fresh air using a ventilation system. In the ventilation equipment, cold fresh air from the outside passes through the warm exhaust air from the inside and is thus warmed up. This works best if the air flows over many thin layers, like in the heat exchanger here. The longer these air channels are, the better the heat exchange works. That's how these devices got their name, heat exchanger. In order to avoid animals or dirt coming into the house with the fresh air, the fresh air enclosure features a bird protection screen and a filter that even traps dust and pollen. Our solar house is finished. During the winter, it's nice and warm. The sun shining through the windows warms up our house. Any additional heat we need, we produce by day-to-day -day activities. Think about the places in our house where heat is generated. Some of the heat sources are hidden behind the flaps in the picture. Can you think of some examples? Candles. Cooking. Lamps and lighting. Bathing and showering using the computer, and watching TV. Okay, now I understand. A solar house uses the sun and should therefore face south. The walls, the roof, and the floor have to be insulated with care. The windows need good insulation with triple panes and insulated frames. The house has to be windproof so that cold air can't get in and there is a ventilation system with a heat exchanger that heats up cold air from the outside. We are saving energy. We save a lot of energy with our passive house. That's important because generating electricity and heating with coal or oil unleashes toxic substances that are harmful to our environment. These substances make plants and humans sick and destroy the planet's protective atmosphere. Burning these traditional fossil fuels also creates greenhouse gases. These greenhouse gases can heat up the Earth's atmosphere by trapping the sun's rays. As a result, our planet becomes hotter and hotter. In order to protect the Earth and ourselves, we have to make sure that the toxic substances are reduced. The ideal solution would be to save energy so that it does not have to be produced in the first place. So think about switching off the devices you are not using and use only ecological devices. When we go somewhere, we should consider taking the bus or the train. They can seat more people than a car, so we can save energy. Or we simply walk. That's the healthiest choice of all. Buildings have to be well insulated and planned well in order to keep them from using up a lot of energy for heating, just like we did with our solar house. Pause the video and try out some of these experiments to better understand how a passive house works.